Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about customers, ditching customers, firing customers, whatever you call it. We're going to say bye bye to customers today on WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is going on? Hope you all are having an absolutely epic day. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, lots of uh, episodes to catch up on. We're like 220 episodes. This has been going on for like four years. We do this every single week. So you found it, the mecca of window cleaning podcast. If you're in any service industry, definitely you'll get something out of this. Hopefully, it'll be better than a cat video. But it is available anywhere podcasts are if you're listening. And it's also available on YouTube if you want to see the most amazing sticker wall ever. It's getting built. It's getting there. If you need supplies, let me let me rephrase. If you buy your supplies already from me, you've given the video a thumbs up, you've subscribed to American Window Cleaner Magazine, and I'm just your rep in general. What's up? High five to all you flipping awesome AF people. What's going on? Thank you so much for letting me put orders in for you. Uh, for everybody else, I am a rep for Window Cleaning Resource. Yes, a salesman. Dun, dun, dun. Shameless plug time. But if you want a rep who isn't salesy, then I'm your guy. And everybody wants a rep. Right? Let me put your orders in. It costs you nothing extra. You got a guy for questions and comments. Put orders in. Make it easy. I'm that guy. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Shoot me a text, call me, whatever you want. Say what's up. I want to be your rep. And finally, if you haven't yet gotten the American Window Cleaner magazine, what the heck? I just We just got like 11 new uh, subscriptions I just mailed out yesterday for new ones, new subscriptions just over the weekend. So please be one of those people. Jump on board. A W C M A G. Dot com is the website. Go there, subscribe, get a subscription. You'll get an, a, an issue of the magazine come to you every single month. And, of course, the sticker sheet. By the way, these are the stickers for, uh, what, the August? Yes, August. Look at that. You know, cool. If you want stickers, you get one in every single issue. And they're always custom and they're always window cleaning related, so... If you haven't seen them, look look behind me. You got ton, tons of sticker sheets. Anywho, awcmag.com. So today, we are talking about firing customers. There's no better way to put it than firing a customer. Now, if you've never fired a customer, lucky, firing a customer can kind of suck sometimes, Right? It really can, but a big thing with firing customers is it makes your company stronger. Now, I'm going to go into a couple different uh, scenarios that I've had over the years. Uh, Please, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and comment on your firings and how you did it and what led up to it and everything else. But here's the thing. If you have customers that are just not where they need to be price-wise, I can change that, right? If I messed up on the price, I would explain it at the first time so it's not a big thing, but I can change something like that, right? But if I have a customer who is always canceling, is always complaining, is always having me try to do have my guys do more things than they're supposed to, if they're always having this big ordeal and they're always trying to to talk down to me, if there's any kind of toxicity with a customer, I am happy to let them go. Now, with that being said, I have only fired maybe 10 customers in all of the 16, 17 years that I've done this. It has not been a lot, but averaging about one a year, maybe, is super healthy. Now, I'm not saying to go out there and just let people go. But here's the thing. Think back when you were a new business. Maybe you are a new business. Maybe this concept is like, 
extremely foreign. You're looking at it going, what? I work so hard to get these people. How, why would I tell them not to? Why would I fire a customer? There's a certain point when you're in the beginning of everything and you have to get in the, the work that you have and every dollar counts, it's very hard to fire a customer. I remember that in like the first year or two, I had a customer who was the biggest, biggest pain in the butt I've ever dealt with in all my life. They were just like, the way they talked down was mean. Just the things they said was just mean. Every time we were done, and I cleaned their house maybe two or three times before I, I, I let them go, they would always get the price and be like, come on. You guys were here for X amount of time. Come on, we'll, we'll do less than this. Let's do better than that on the price. It's like, we've talked about this. I bid the price, you said yes. It was always something, and the way that they talked was just the most talk. I hated going there. When I left, I was grumpy the whole day. And in the very beginning, they were money. I couldn't say no to a $200 job. Now, mind you, that was a long time ago. A $200 job, when you don't have a ton of clients, is very, very hard. But as you continue to build this business, all of a sudden, it's not that you don't respect the customer's you just look and go, well, you know, I would 1,000%. And, and take this, if you don't get anything else from any of the shows, take this. But I would be 1,000% happier to have an easy, right, carefree, great customers than I would to make more money. If making more money meant that I had to bring on some piece of garbage customers, I don't want it. There's something so much in business is that we get into business for the fact that we have, you know, a uh, loosened schedule. We're our own bosses. We do all this. It's great. We have control of everything. And then you go ahead and you get these people who just ruin everything by how they act. If you have toxic customers, you have to get rid of them. You just have to in order to strengthen the rest of the company. I'm telling you. So I had this guy uh in the very beginning and after everything in, in in he just he was just it just ruined everything about it with this customer finally on the third one he started off right before anything and uh it was a while ago so i the, the wordage could change but he said something along the lines of um um I don't want, I got people coming over and don't want them to see you at my property. So be faster than you normally are or something like that. It was basically like, I don't want people to see you here. I got people coming over. So go faster. And I said to him, he said, you know, we've done the job for quite a while and I just don't think we're the right company for you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it here. We're going to leave. We're not charging you for service today. But we're not the company for you. Every time we're here, there's a, no, 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 it's not that. We don't have issues. I said, every time we're here, you have pricing issues and timing issues and everything else. And I just, I think that we're just not the company who can perform for you. So I do apologize, but we're going to go our separate ways. And my guy that was with me was watching and he just kind of like started packing up and walking in the car. And he's like, no, you, come on now. Come on. You've been, uh, and I, at that point, you just kind of separate it, you know. When I left there, it was the greatest feeling of my entire life at that point. I mean, other than my kids being born and being married and all the stuff I'm supposed to say. <laughs> but in business, it was great. It was absolutely amazing. Because it was just this thing, like I had this burden on my shoulders. Think about that. You, you got enough stuff in business, right? You're dealing with the marketing and the advertising and you're dealing with the, the employees and the payroll and the government and the taxes and everything else that's all weighing on your shoulders. Wouldn't it be nice to just drop one little problem? Now, if you're listening or watching right now, you can think of at least one customer that you would be happy with not having anymore. Think of that one customer. And think about what that customer does to your staff, does to your company, does to your bottom line. Listen, I 
have amazing customers. You have amazing customers. There's so many people you go and they go, oh my gosh, thank you so much. This is absolutely amazing. You guys did such a good job. Thank you so much. Here's a tip. Oh, here's some cookies. Thank you guys. Oh, just do what you, you know, uh, we can't get to that window. We can't something. That, oh, that's fine. Absolutely. Just happy you're here. Right? Those are the ones you feel great at the end of the day. If you could somehow magically fill your whole day with that instead of these other people who are succubuses, you would. Because here's the truth. The truth is a customer that's a succubus, they will take up 50% of your energy. The whole rest of your company is the other 50%. That's absolutely incredible when you think about that. The time, the stress, the panic, the worry, the headaches, all that comes from one customer. So you got to let them go. Now, I'm not telling you to do this. You got three customers to your name right now because you're brand new and you got a customer. If you want to do that, absolutely fine. I know that. But as you get into business more and more, you will be okay with making it a more a better culture and a better feeling than you do having a more uh, a bigger paycheck, right? If you get anything out of this, that's the key right there is that Sanity and stress in business has to be maintained. It has to be your number one goal. If you're not focused on that and you're not cutting things out like this, you're just living with it, you're going to burn yourself out. We talked about burnout. If you haven't watched that episode, go back. Uh, search burnout. That was our last one. Just talked about getting just fried. You get to a certain point that way, right? But here's a big thing. When you are letting go a customer, it has to be done right. It has to be. Because here's the thing. No matter how you end it, there was always going to be anger involved. And I've done it enough times, and I've done it in my head right. The other person is always unhappy. Because you're basically telling them, hey, you a-hole, you treat me like crap. No one's ever stopped you from treating people like crap. You do this to everybody. Every waiter you've ever been to, you've you've talked down and, and, and you know treated them like crap. And now somebody's finally said, hey... We're not going to take your crap. Because truth be told, there's just people out there who are unhappy. They're always unhappy. They love the fact that they pay you, so it's okay that they're a-holes to you. Always. There's people out there who will always be unhappy. Hey, you just won the $10 million lottery. Well, $10 million isn't going to get me too far. I'm only 50. (laughs) Like They look at the negative and everything. They're always going to be that person. They're never going to be happy. Why does that have to come in and play into your company? But it has to be done right. Because when you're done, when I was done with that first one, and it was not as smooth as it probably could have been, but as I'm leaving the property, people are always, they come out and they're screaming at you. Or they slam the door on you. Or they're, you'll never work in this town again. Okay, Karen. Right? They're always going to do that. So, Trying to minimize and reduce burden in the instant how you deliver it is really, 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 really important. Here's some keys. The first thing that I always think in my head is when I'm firing a customer, when I'm saying bye bye I always put it on myself. And I know it's not us. You know that it's not you. Obviously, you want all the customers you can be. They're paying you to do a service. That's what we do. But you can't put it back on and be like, you're horrible to work for. You're awful. I don't want to do it. Even if that's what you're thinking, because that's what we're thinking. But what I always say is, hey, you know, I just don't think that we're the right company for you. You know, there's a lot of things that you're looking to have done that we just can't perform. And I don't want to leave you with a sour taste in your mouth. I don't want to disappoint you as a company. I don't think we're right. I don't want, it's always me. It's always, I'm sorry. We're not right for you, right? It's our fault for not being up to your expectations. I think you're looking for uh, a different level of clean than we provide. And I do apologize for that right? I don't like bringing it on you. If you say, Hey, you're a horrible person, which by the way, you should, I mean, in your head, you should be able to just say that, right? You should just be able to like, you are a piece of garbage person. And 
I don't like how you talk to me or my staff. I don't appreciate it. And I hope that you stub your toe for the next 10 years. Right. But you can't say that. You can't say that. What you can say is blame yourself because here's what it is. If I say, oh my gosh, I can't do that. You know, um, uh, you're looking for a uh, level of, uh, uh, just don't provide. And I, I apologize about that. I, I don't want to be the one that, 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 you know, makes you unhappy. I, I am sorry about that. They're like instantly like, well, these guys, they couldn't keep up with what I needed. You know, uh, like that's the thing. If you call a company and say you're, uh, you know, uh, cleaning um, uh, carpets or something, or, or say you're a, a neighborhood guy that mows, he's got a lawnmower and you have 10 acres of grass, you got a football field and you call the guy and you say, hey, I'd love you to cut my football field. And the guy with a push mower says, Man, I'm sorry. I just have this push mower. It's too big for me. I just can't do it. You're not like, what the heck? How can you not? You're like, all right, well, I guess my job is just too big for you, right? Taking that on to say, like, the capabilities aren't there. Because here's the thing. The truth of the matter is, I don't give two dumps about what that customer thinks about me personally. I don't care what they keep to themselves about it. So if they go, this guy's not capable, he can't do it. But I'm out there doing, you know, high rise or I'm out there doing, you know, $40,000 projects. He doesn't need to know that. She doesn't need to know that. However it is, as long as they're not telling everybody else, I'm happy. Because the big thing about this is the way that you tell them, the way that you break up with them, dictates the backlash or the effect to firing a customer. Firing a customer is literally like a bomb going off, right? How big should the bomb be? If you got a firework, a little little smoke burns out real quick but if you got like a whole you know uh building full of fertilizer it's gonna be a heck of a big thing and everybody around is gonna feel it right that's kind of where business is is i want them to be i wish they weren't upset i really do but i want them to have the most minimal amount of blowback to me so that's why i word it that way another thing you could even send you know something after i had two people out of everybody that I've fired that I've sent them something because we got into the project and um, they were changing the scope so much that uh, it didn't, It I mean, literally doubled the price and we were not able to charge anymore. Like, no, 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 no. This is, this is what it was. You know, you guys, when you bid this, you bid it with this. I said, no, we didn't. We wrote everything down. I walked through with you. Nothing was, you know, anyway. So what I did was I actually sent them uh, a gift. We have a bakery that was in town and I sent them a thing and said, I'm so sorry for the misunderstanding. You know, uh, we apologize. I truly didn't mean to put you in a place. And I wrote a little letter with it. You know, it was really kind of something. And it was just something to soften that blow, right? If you got a firework and you lay a blanket on top of it, you're going to have less, right? You're going to have less blowback, less damage. So if you need to, you can always do that. But the big thing is, is that when a customer is angry, no matter what the reason they're angry, it's uh, not meeting their expectations is why they would complain or why they would tell everybody, right? So if you just go to somebody and you say, you're awful, I wish you nothing but the worst luck in the rest of your life, you treat us like crap and I never want to see you again and you leave. Their expectation was, wow, this I didn't expect this guy to yell at me. Like, I'm paying him. Now he's going to go in and he's going to say, well, I need to do everything in my power to make everybody else the, the same level that I got, I have to give out to the world. But if you're apologetic and say, I'm so sorry, this is what happened. We're just not there, you know. They, You can leave and be like, I can't believe they did that. But they're not so angry that they need to repay the anger. If you piss somebody off, they have to repay the anger. And that ends up coming in telling everybody, writing bad reviews, doing some blog or something or whatever, going in and finding every single... And I've seen this happen in other people's accounts. I've heard of a guy, he explained the whole situation to me, and he ended up cussing cussing the, the, the guy off and just cussing him out. He got so angry, got in his truck, peeled out... It was a whole bad thing. Um, 
And uh, he's telling me this story, and I'm like, oh, wow. So what happened with that customer? Oh, they went on everywhere from Yelp to Google. I mean, they spent hours posting bad reviews on me. Yeah. Because you create, and if it's you that, uh, you know, you told me that story, you, you know that it wasn't a super thing. So if you're telling me this stuff, I don't know something you guys don't know, right? But if you do that, you know they're going to do it. It's like that angry ex-lover, right? If you have a girlfriend and you cheat on her with her best friend, she's going to hate you and destroy everything and just going to, she has to create the pain back that you created to her. It's the same thing. But people have been in relationships lots. You may have been where it just didn't work out. You say, you know, I just don't think this is working out. And she said, yeah, you know, I get the same feeling. And you guys hug and leave. And then no one does anything, right? Keep in mind that is the ending. The ending is the least amount of collateral damage as possible. Because the truth of the matter is, if you say bye-bye to somebody and they write bad reviews, it could cost you thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Really, if not more, it sure could. Because when somebody writes a bad review and puts them all this stuff, if you're reading this customer, oh, they're great, they're great, they're great. The customer cussed me out in front of my kids, peeled out of my driveway, told me I'm this, and then wrote everything. You're going, what the heck? That one really bad review trumps all of the good reviews. They're like, well, that's the type of person he really is. People focus on negative. They always focus on negative. So minimizing that. If you get somebody and say, uh, you know, one star review, they showed up and then said that the scope of work was a, a, a bit out of their their uh, range that they could do and they apologized. They couldn't do the work, one star. But they did send me donuts the next day, apologize. Like, you go, well, wow. I mean, they felt bad. Like, stuff can happen. It doesn't have to be that you have to be perfect all the time. It just has to be that you understand what you should be like. And that's where that is. Right? So, firing customers strengthens the rest of the customers. If you got 10 customers, one of them is just a pain in the butt to deal with. 10% of your customers are bad. If you fire that one person... Now you only have nine customers, but they're all great, right? That's where we're looking at. If you are a single one-man show and this is uh, the only thing that you uh, have, you're never going to have um, employees or you're never going to have anything. This is your one-man show and you say, I got all the work I could ever need. That's awesome. High five. You don't have to spend money on marketing or anything else. But you do still need to strengthen your company, right? If you could somehow increase, uh, you know, um, what you make, or you could, um, if you could, um, get better customers or get more flow or Zen in your business and not have stress every day. And what's the feeling you have when you have a light day? Oh man, today's going to be a piece of cake, right? Walking on sunshine, right? You're just jumping around with your loafers. You're happy. That's the same thing. If you can get rid of some of these people who ruin your day, It will help you. I've had people, one of my my worst firings was, and I did almost feel bad, but we get to this lady's house. We've done all the time. She always pays with bad checks, and she never pays on time. She's on a very fixed income, but she was a nice lady. Like, we tried to work with her, and always, you know, I could put up with all that. Um... She would also not be at appointments. We had scheduled an appointment for 9 in the morning. She wouldn't get there until like 9.45. Well, just start on the outs. Well, it was a storm house. It wasn't really possible to do that. And I told you, you can't do that, but we're talking about all this stuff. Final straw, I get a call from my guys, and they say, we need you to come here now. I said, oh, great, what happened? She, he said, um, the homeowner's husband is naked at the top of the stairs doing a helicopter, saying, if they want to look at my fill-in-the-blank, they can look at my fill-in-the-blank. Screaming at them. Telling them if they come upstairs, he's going to shoot them. Like, all this other stuff. What ended up happening was, the guy's, like, nurse wasn't there. They're supposed to get a, a, a sponge bath or something. So he's waiting to get a bath. And then the window cleaners show up, which we were planned and scheduled for. It was this whole, like, as soon as you threaten my employees... 
As soon as you treat my employees with disrespect, I'm done. I'm done. I said, I got there and we explained everything. Oh, Mr. Goss, I'm so sorry. You know, it's just he's having a bad day and blah, blah, blah. I said, we're unfortunately not going to be doing service for you anymore. All the work that we've done now, I'm not going to charge you for anything. Um, but it's just not going to work out. I just, I can't have my employees going through that. It's not fair to them. And that was the one where I didn't apologize and tell them it was me because it wasn't. And, uh, I cut ties with her. She was a long time customer. I had her for probably eight years. It was eight rough years, but it was always like, oh man, we're kind of doing her a favor. You know, she was always so happy. She'd give the guys a hug like, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. At that point, it just cut it. It just was and what that did was it built rapport with my guys that said hey if something comes up i have their back i've chosen my employees over all my customers and to build rapport that really is important right i got there i said guys just go ahead pack up head back to the shop we'll we'll have a meeting here in just a little bit right and then i handled the situation and it made the company stronger. It made the employees stronger. It made my customer base stronger. It absolutely made the entire thing stronger. If you don't think that that's the truth about firing an employee, then you just haven't been there yet. And I know a lot of you have actually had that where they had to fire an employee. Um, not an employee, a customer. I probably said employee a bunch of times. But if you're firing a customer you understand that it's for the greater good, right? The big thing in business is we flow like water. Here's the thing. This is going to sound super hippy-dippy, and I'm not a hippy-dippy, I swear. I consider myself a positive thinker. That was corny. But <laughs> but what it is is you are a river, a stream, a creek, a whatever. You are that flowing water. Now what happens with flowing water when a stick lands in the water? Well, one stick, water can get over. One stick doesn't really change the course of the water because the water can kind of overcome it. It brings it in and just kind of still flows, right? But as soon as there's one stick, now every other stick that's in the water moving and flowing with the water that wasn't a big issue before gets stuck on that one stick. Every leaf gets stuck on that one stick. All of a sudden, you have a dam. All because of the first stick was there. A dam can stop water. You cannot flow if there's too many issues. And it may all be based on one issue. If that one stick is removed, everything flows smoothly again. That's business. That is should be your mindset in general. Finding the things that impede the flow of you and removing them, moving them over, clearing it out so that you can flow again. That's what bad customers are. That's what headache jobs are. That's what bad pay is. You got a job, you're like, man, we're making like $20 on this job. It was bid so wrong. If you have little problems like that, it makes all the other problems bigger. If you take that stick out right away, you'll never clog your flow, right? There's always going to be beavers out there who are, their entire job is to put sticks in your flow, right? You have people like that. But the truth is, if one of your customers is the beaver and you shoot the beaver, there's not actively anything trying to clog your flow. That was the longest analogy that I've done um, but I try to live by that flow is more important than anything else. So if you haven't yet and you have to say bye-bye to a customer, I'm sorry in advance. It's going to suck, but do it right. And you'll actually be all right with the results. Just make sure that they're happy. Make sure that you leave. Let me rephrase that. Not that they're happy. Make sure that they are not as angry as they could be. Minimize the backlash. That's the key to firing a customer, Right. Soak it up. Don't blow up on a customer. It's never worth it. It doesn't make you feel any better. Some people are just horrible. They just are, right? Anyway, thanks for uh, watching. By the way, if you are um, in window cleaning, which I think you are, then I want to be a rep. I want to be 
your personalized rep of awesomeness. So give me a call, 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. I text all day. If you call me and leave a message, um, unfortunately, that's like the last thing I can get to. So um, if you text me, it's usually quicker. It's usually quicker. So text me at that. I want to put your orders in. Put it all in your cart. Say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. And I'll put it in for you. It costs you nothing extra. It's a virtual high five of awesomeness. If you ever thought you got anything out of any of these four years of videos, which, by the way, I do want to say a genuine thank you to people who tell me like, man, these have really, really helped. Like I get that every couple days and it really, really, uh, it lets me know that something's going on. So I do love the orders. I love people who go out and get their magazine subscriptions. All this stuff comes back. It's like a big thank you. So thank you to everybody who does. By the way, if you haven't seen any of the stickers, we have the lost and not forgotten blue hawk towel. Uh, we have the just say no. Windex, um, uh, the Squeegee Adidas, some of my favorites, and then uh, Streak Busters. Anyway, we have a ton of good stickers. If you want them, we sell sticker packs on the site. Super cheap. They're like five bucks a piece, something like that. Anyway, sticker packs, sticker sheets. If you want, get a subscription to the magazine. Because if you do, then you get an awesome magazine with a bunch of awesome articles the newest and latest and greatest uh, gear in there, and you get a sticker sheet every month. By the way, also, I have uh, kind of teased this before, but awcmag.com is also going to have a sticker club if you want to join that. It's just a monthly thing. It's like five bucks a month. So anyway, there you go. If you haven't had to say goodbye yet, do it. It will help you feel more comfortable in your business. But until next week, go out there and be epic.